So let's go ahead and finish the script we started in part 1. This time we'll have a closer look at dealing with knobs. We will grab some information from the preferences to build an output path. We will render the whole setup and um, pull the rendered files back into Nuke and then delete all the unnecessary stuff and finally wrap up the whole code to live in a menu item so it's actually easier to use. So let's get started by selecting that last node and simply running the code from last time to see that uh, everything's still working and that looks fine. I don't need those two last lines, they were just for temp. The first thing I want to do is I want to change a couple of knobs in the checkerboard node. So let's type the variable that holds the checkerboard node and to access a knob I simply type dot knob, so we use the knob method, followed by the knob's name. And once again I'm going to change the box size knob, so I'll type box size in quotes and that returns the node's knob that has that name. And what I want to do is I want to set a value, so I go set value and the new value is 150. So let's run that line and watch the checkerboard change its size. If you don't really know what knob name to use, you can do a couple of things. You could pop up the uh, panel and simply check the tooltip, like so. Or you could print the actual node object, like so. And that will print a Python dictionary which consists of knobs and values. So the knob names are the keys and their respective values are the dictionary values. And that's a nice ordered list to get an overview over the knobs. Let's uh, change the center line width this time. So once again I go checker and instead of dot knob I'm going to use an alternative method because we now know that the uh, node object is a dictionary so I can use Python's ways of uh, dealing with dictionaries by simply using square brackets and the knob name that I'm after. And that will access the knob as well. So I can then go set value 0 to get rid of the yellow lines. Like so. So those two lines pretty much are interchangeable in terms of how to access the knob. This is a bit more verbose but easier to read and this one is a bit shorter so just pick whichever one suits you best. So next we'll have a look at the preferences real quick to grab the cache path and we'll be using that to build a valid output directory. So you can see here if you hover your mouse pointer over the disk cache knob like so that will tell us the name is disk cache path. We'll access the preferences as if it was a hidden node. In fact, it is a unique hidden node, so we can use the same method we used in part one to access it by name, node, And its name is actually preferences with a lowercase p for some reason. So that accesses the preferences. And what we want to do is we want to access its knob. And the knob is called disk cache path, as we just saw in the tooltip. And finally, we don't want to set a value this time around, we just want to read its value, so we just type value with an empty set of parentheses. And let's see if we did that right. Yeah, so this returns the value that is in your disk cache path knob in the preferences. So let's store that in a variable called uh, tempter, for example, and then um, build the entire path by adding a, a, a file name. I'm going to call that temp path. And the temp path should be whatever is in tempter plus and then we'll just add the file name but I'll put a slash there to make sure we go into that temp directory and then I'll just make up a file name just like you would in a write node roto check roto check there followed by some frame padding and I'm just gonna run jpegs so that should create an, a valid uh, output path next we'll create a uh, write node let's just give ourselves some more space here so let's go write equals nuke.nodes.write and the file knob should have the value that lives in the variable temp path and the write node's name should be temp write. Close that and run those three lines and that gives us a new write node in the script and we already know how to set its input from the first part write.setInput 
there's only one pipe so obviously it'll be index 0 and that should be connected to the merge node like so.